What's up, everybody? It's back here in the unknown here, and I figured I'd try something a little bit different today. Every once in a while, you have to go somewhere where you're not allowed to take any electronics, whether it be phone, tablet, e-readers, anything, and you have to resort to something to keep you occupied. In this case, physical media or books, which I absolutely love. I have two favorite stores that I like to visit and frequent a lot, and that would be Wegmans. They are phenomenal. If you don't have a Wegmans, I feel sorry for you. It's a great grocery store but it's so much more than that. And also Barnes and Noble. Barnes and Noble has a mixture of everything. I mean, now they even have a toy section. So I really like Barnes and Noble. I love reading. I didn't in high school. I, I couldn't stand reading, but after I got out into college, it's one of my favorite places to go to. And I would drink coffee and read books or do homework there or study. Loved it. Of course, you know, my college library and all that, but Barnes and Noble just, there's something special there. They have a special cafe. But anyway, I digress. Uh, we're here to talk about Chuck Palahniuk's book. I just read The Invention of Sound, and it it's disturbing, to say the least. But I, I still want to talk about it because it was really good, and it, it took me on a journey that was disturbing, and yeah, that's, that's probably the best way to put it. Chuck Palahniuk, if you haven't read any of his books, he's the author of Fight Club, Choke, Stranger Than Fiction, and a slew of others. Obviously, I'm a big fan. Uh, my two favorite writers are Chuck Palahniuk and Stephen King, and I consider them both to be horror writers. Chuck Palahniuk, these books are not, you know, straight up stories. They're they're a type of horror. It's it's maybe a dark comedy, and he has dark comedy in almost all of these, but it's it's a type of dark comedy that's horror that you don't want to look straight at, but he's forcing you to look and go straight into it. Which, again, in this climate, a lot of writers and TV shows and movies, they're not looking at directly. So I don't want to say it's a breath of fresh air, but it's something that no one else does as well as Chuck Palahniuk does. And I kind of want to go off on a tangent here. I was lucky enough to meet him a few years ago. Uh, what, one of my favorite movies is Fight Club because, you know, all the different Easter eggs that are in that. And it's a good movie. It meant a lot to me when I was in my early 20s. And he did two sequels to the, uh, he did Fight Club 2 and Fight Club 3. Now these are graphic novels and he released them, they're, they're comic books. Um, but when the collection of these was released in hardback, he went on tour. So I was able to meet him in North Raleigh, North Carolina. And when I was waiting in line, I was so excited. Uh, I didn't think I'd ever get the chance to meet him. So I actually ordered a uh, variant cover of Fight Club 2. It's the, it's not the best cover, but it's the one that I could afford. But it's signed by him. It doesn't have a, a certificate of authenticity or anything, but I wanted a comic book signed by him because he actually wrote the comic. So I was so excited to have a comic book signed by him. But that's another reason why I wanted to go here. The bookstore, it, it only charged $30, which was the cost of the comic book or the, the graphic novel, and he would sign it for you for free. So I went ahead, bought a ticket, showed up, but me being a comic book lover, I wanted, you know, anytime you get something signed by somebody, you want something rare that's unique. So when this was coming out, I believe he went on tour and he was at New York Comic Con. That year I couldn't go, but they released a variant cover of Fight Club issue one, and there were only a thousand copies of this made. So... Obviously, I wanted him to sign this for me, and he did. Here's his, his, his signature. It's very distinguishable, but I wanted him to sign that for me. I picked it up. I ordered it from eBay. It was really pricey at the time, but I got it, and I went to the comic book shop or the bookstore, and I was told that he was only going to sign one thing for me. So I had a hardcover, which was I brought the book Haunt, which if you guys don't know, it when he went on tour for that book, when he was reading a chapter, people were passing out because it was so graphic and it, it, it was rough. I haven't read it, or I didn't read it at the time. I read what everyone was talking about when I was waiting in line to meet Chuck Palahniuk, and I was sweating. I was getting weak in the knees. I think my face was even getting red, and the buddy that I was with was just like, hey, are you okay? So I, I get that story. If you guys want some real gross horror that makes you weak in the knees, check out Haunt, and I have a copy of that right here. Uh, Haunt is ridiculous if um, you're into like some gross stuff. 
I haven't been able to finish it. I read that part that everyone was talking about, but I haven't been able to actually finish the rest of the book. But I, I, I aim to at some point, but I haven't been brave enough to go back and do that. But anyway, when I met Chuck Palahniuk, 30 bucks to get the comic book signed, the graphic novel, but that was it. So I wanted my comic signed. So what I did was I bought a copy of this that he signed, extra copies for the bookstore. I paid cost again for this because I really want him to sign my comic. So what he did was he saw that I walked up to him and Chuck Palahniuk, again, he's amazing. You can get your photo taken with him. And he has two poses, so you can either get into a fighting stance with him, or he will legitimately put you in a headlock, which is what I went for. I wanted to be put in a headlock by Chuck Palahniuk. Come on. And a lot of people, famous people, don't do that, especially nowadays. No one's going to touch you with everything going on in the real world. But it was a unique and fun experience, and I'm really glad I had it. But when he signed my comic, he asked me, where's, where's your hardcover? And I said, I... I was told that you're only going to sign one thing and the one thing I really wanted signed was this comic so I told him you know I, I brought uh you know haunt and I brought I bought a copy of this but I paid extra just to have your signature on it so he actually said listen go get haunt and go get the comic and I'm going to sign them for you so he actually signed well it was already signed but he actually addressed it out to me so he made out all this and it's his signature I saw him sign um, on the other books. So I have no doubt that it's actually his, but he was, he's, he's such a nice person, down to earth person, which is another reason why I want to kind of promote him on this video. But if you want a dark, scary, disturbing story, check out this book. It's not long. It's like maybe 230 pages. I always try to read one of his books a year in the summertime. It's kind of a tradition that I have. Sometimes I haven't been a able to do it but each year I always try to read one I may read another one this year but this one it's a father he's seeing his daughter grow up on the back of mill cartons it's that missing photo his daughter went missing at the age of seven I believe and he's been searching for her he's been looking on the dark web trying to find her and trying to rescue her and trying to capture anyone that he sees on videos with children on the dark web doing horrendous crimes against children so that's the father. And then there's this other character called Mitzi, and she is a signed sound designer. I believe that's the title. And what she does, she creates the audio for movies. So if it's someone walking through the snow, she will create that noise and she will uh, create other noises throughout the movie that have to be dubbed over that you don't normally hear when they're filming. So the cover of this, which is something else that I also like, he, he has unique covers and they all kind of relate back to the story that he tells. And this one has a watermelon smashing open. So one of the things that they say in the book is one of the audio sounds of someone jumping off a building and landing on the street is tying graham crackers to a watermelon and then dropping it on something. And that's the noise of that person hitting their head on the concrete. It's very dark, but that's what the cover of this is representing, the noise and the watermelon breaking. They also go into, you know, how other noises are made. So the femur of a human being being broken is frozen celery being broken. They, they give some other examples. I can't remember them offhand, but it's interesting because Chuck Palahniuk does a lot of background and research into a topic that he's looking at. And he's got a lot of examples of that in here. He also explores Ambien because one of the other characters, uh, Mitzi, takes Ambien and she does horrendous things. But she doesn't remember and people have committed murder while on ambien and they've gotten off so it, it, he kind of explores ambien and alcohol mixing together and what that does to a person but it, it it's it's an interesting story it's an interesting read it definitely disturbed me but there's also dark humor so if you haven't read chuck polinick before you may want to start off with Invisible Monsters. This is more comedic. When I say comedic, it's still dark comedy. It's a supermodel, and she is simply driving, and she gets hit in the jaw, and her bottom jaw is torn off. And it's about how someone that was at the peak of her, her career as a supermodel loses her jaw, and now she's no one wants to look at her, right? So what does someone do with something like that? 
but it's also very funny. So the story is, you know, completely random shot. Someone shoots a gun, a bullet skims off the surface of water and hits her when she's driving a car over a bridge. Completely one in a million possibility of that happening, but it happened. But it, it's a coincidence. It's interesting. And how does that character respond to that? It's funny and horrific at the same time. And it's horror. It, these books are, are horror related. And this one is no different. So if you haven't read Chuck Palahniuk before, I may want to recommend Invisible Monsters. But if you have, if you've seen Fight Club, if you've liked what, you, what you've seen, check out The Invention of Sound. It's great for a summer read. It's dark. It's a breakneck pace. Very fast. You'll get through it in a couple of hours. So that's my recommendation for the summer of 2021 for your read. Have you re read any of Chuck Palahniuk's books before? Have you read Fight Club 2, Fight Club 3, any of his comics that are out there? He's even got an adult coloring book. Have you read this? Have you colored any of the pictures in here? If I can find one. Uh, let me know in the comments down below. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Remember to keep washing your damn hands. I'm Bat Kerm, and I'll see you in the next one. Bat Kerm out.